Hi, my name's Harry, and welcome to another episode of Weld and Fabrication. Today we're going to be looking at safe setup and shutdown of oxy fuel cut equipment. Um, so what we've got here is our oxygen cylinder, which is black with a, a white band, and our acetylene cylinder, which, as you can see, says acetylene on there, but the colour itself is maroon, which identifies that it's, it contains acetylene. Um, the regulators on the top of the cylinders themselves, Oxygen is blue, acetylene on this occasion is red, um, and the one thing you can't see, well, they're already set up, is that the oxygen has a left hand, a right hand thread, and the acetylene has a left hand thread, which basically means that you cannot physically fit an acetylene regulator onto an oxygen cylinder, or vice versa. So the equipment, in that respect, they're not interchangeable. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through the equipment, and I'll do a safe. Uh, set up shut down and leak detection test. So the main part of the equipment after the regulator which effectively controls the flow of the cylinder, the gas from the cylinder through the regulator to the torch um, and the cylinder pressure itself for a standard W size cylinder like this is 230 bar um, and that steps it down to a working pressure of approximately 1 to 2 bar. Um, so what we're going to look at is the basic equipment in terms of the regulator off the back of that we've got what's called a flashback arrester and the flashback what that does is it stops any uh, any flames if they have any flames that come back up the pipes or back up the tubes going back into the regulator and therefore into the cylinder and causing a, an explosion or a fire. Um, we have our hoses and these hoses go all the way around this up to our torch itself okay so on a torch again the hoses are colour coded in conjunction with the cylinders and the regulators and so are the knobs on the torch, um, they're, they're colour coded in the same way. On the top there we have an additional handle and this is when we push it down what we would do is that will push uh, an additional amount of oxygen through the centre of our nozzle uh, for our cutting uh, jet itself. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, a leak detection spray sometimes referred to as T-Pole and it's a non-oil based solution um, because we don't want to cause what's called an exothermic reaction which will happen when you carburise something like ferry liquid for instance you shouldn't use for testing or leaks on oxygen cylinders uh, because of the, the fire triangle uh, that can cause you issues there uh, so what we're going to do is on the oxygen cylinder there's a, a, a valve on the back and we're going to turn the key now you notice the key is at 90 degrees to the valve itself to the um, regulator itself and that's because it's nice and easy to turn it on and off um, because if it's, not, if it's not easily accessible, if it was on the side, around this side here, for instance, we're trying to turn that tap, we might not be able to necessarily, because it would hit on the side of the, the uh, flashback arrester, and therefore in an emergency, it would be much more difficult to turn on and off. Same with the acetylene as well, so we can turn this on, and it's got this, in this instance it's got a cylinder, on the top of the cylinder there's a, a tap here, so we can turn that on as well. And the first thing we're going to do is just check around the neck of the cylinder, put some leak detection spray on there, on both, just double check around the actual neck of the regulator itself as well. Just check for any sort of bubbles that are coming out. So we can see there there's a few little bubbles. Now they're settled down so we just want to leave it for a short period of time make sure they're okay. If it's the first time you've ever used this piece of equipment and there's other people potentially using it, what is worth checking is just check around your gauges as well. Make sure there's no leaks around the gauge themselves. Check your flashback arresters up to your ends of your hoses. Like so, we're just going to check and it, this solution creates a, a hell of a lot of bubbles um, and we just want to know whether or not it's leaking uh, in that respect. Um, so they all look good, they're all fine. So what we're going to do now is just check, check with pressurise, pressurise up to the end of the hose again. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure, more pressure in for the torch. And we're just going to check around the fittings on the torch, just make sure they're okay and we can see there's no leaks around the torch itself. We can even check around the actual knobs, make sure there's no leaks in there as well. That all looks good to me. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we know there's no leaks. Now, there should be a regular maintenance schedule, so you wanna to check to make sure the hoses, there's no uh, kinks or nicks. Something might be dropped on them, make sure there's no leaks on the hoses themselves. Um, and as long as they're all okay, and you're happy to use that piece of equipment at that point in time, then at that point in time, you can then ignite the torch. So what we're going to do, I'm using I've got a pair of safety gloves 
and I've also got a pair of tinted safety specs. So these are a shade five, um, approximately shade three to five, maybe slightly higher. If you're using plasma cutting, then you might want it a little bit higher again, depending on the ampage you're, you're cutting at. But for oxyacetylene or oxypropane cutting, uh, a shade five is, is adequate. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we put the specs on, put the gloves on, and I'm gonna ignite, and this is where it becomes quite important in terms of setting the torch up. There's two, two dials on there, so we've got our fuel, we've got our fuel, in this instance we're using the acetylene, which is red, and we've got the oxygen, which is blue, okay? We always light, we're always gonna light the fuel first, and then engage the oxygen, okay? And then when we turn it off, we're always going to turn the fuel off first and turn the oxygen off after. Okay, so we're going to increase, just turn, just about one turn on the acetylene. We've got that carburising flame that you see a lot of smoke, just going to engage a little bit of oxygen, like so. Until we've created this, what we call a neutral flame. So there's three flame types that you get with an oxyacetylene torch. So we get what's called a carburising flame, which is an excess of acetylene, and you'll find that you've got this, this outer cone, and then as we increase the amount of acetylene, you see you've got this inner, this sectional middle cone there, and the inner cone there, right on the inside. Um, so as we increase the amount of, or increase or decrease, to get it back to a neutral flame, a neutral flame is an equal amount of acetylene and oxygen. At that point in time, if I then increase the amount of oxygen, those needle like those inner jets become longer and thinner, with the noise increasing. They become longer, elongated. That goes again. Um, and at that point in time, we also press back to a neutral flame. If we press the trigger on the torch itself, you can see this inner jet right the jet of oxygen that we use to cut through the material. So safe shut down. If I was just to turn off the oxygen first, what would happen is I'd create this flame like this, and then if we then change the flame back, it starts to die down. But what we want to do is if we just turn the acetylene off first, it kills the flame straight away. And that is a safe shutdown of the torch also. So you must always make sure you turn on the acetylene first, light the flame, engage the oxygen, and then when you turn it off, you're gonna turn off the acetylene and then turn off the oxygen after, okay? That way, by doing it in that sequence, it cuts the flame off and it's less likely then to draw back up the torch uh, and cause uh, any sort of dangerous in terms of fire or explosion. So once we know the, the torch is turned off, <coughs> what we can then do is we can turn off, turn off the cylinders, turn off, the oxygen, like so. And then we can even go as far as purging the lines out. So we can press the oxygen trigger, and we can see now on the gauges, drop back down to zero, like so. And we can do the same on the acetylene as well. So as we turn, open the acetylene valve, we can see that drop down to zero as well, okay? Always make sure if you're doing oxyacetylene cutting, you do it in a well-ventilated uh, area as well. Uh, just from, from a safe point of view, and any piece of material you do cut, Obviously make sure you're wearing the correct PPE and also make sure you have a pair of pliers or something available to you to pick the material up once you cut it because the heat is going to be extremely high. Okay, thank you very much.